It's been a couple years since I've posted anything, but I want to get back into it for 2023. And one project I did this weekend is um, I took the relatively new Atari VCS console and I turned that into a Linux workstation. So if you haven't been following, what Atari has done is they've, they've kind of had what I thought was a pretty reasonable strategy. They basically created kind of a mini PC. They're using the AMD 1606G, I believe, which is an embedded Ryzen chip. The basic Atari VCS comes with like eight gigs of pretty decent um, Kingston RAM. And it also comes with a 32 gigabyte um, eMMC for the hard drive. So what I did is I added um, an M.2 SSD one terabyte, and I also added 32 gigs of RAM, um, 2400 megahertz, which was the same speed, and I used Corsair Vengeance. We see a pretty cool kind of boot up screen with asteroids. And now it's asking for a controller. Okay, so now I've attached the... Ah! It's okay, it can handle it. This one looks like it's actually installing updates on its own. Okay, so it looks like it was able to download the updates. Um, it looks like it's trying to update the BIOS now. Okay, so this is kind of what the main menu looks like. I'm going to go to the store. And you can see it's just their own storefront. Um, and I basically logged in with an existing email and an existing PIN. Okay, this is Atari 50, the anniversary celebration. And it's expensive. It's 40 bucks, but it's pretty awesome because they have um, this really cool menu system where it's kind of like a timeline. And... Um, it's just like telling the story of Atari. So the birth of the console, 1977, and you move along this timeline. And then when it comes to a game, you can actually, um, basically start playing it. This is kind of a cop out and I'm going to actually skip the kind of how-to to do the upgrades because there's better videos than what I could make. In particular, I used the teardown and upgrade video by ETA Prime. Um, so I recommend that video for doing this. So I'm going to kind of fast forward through my, my work and just kind of maybe stop it in some places to show some features. Okay, so this is like the correct size driver. Um, so on the side of it, it's a T10, so yeah, Torx 10, I think. And I'm gonna go ahead and just remove each of these four screws. Okay, so I took those four screws out. Um, remember, this is the bottom, this is the front with the logo, and this is the top. And the back is this cool red. So now what I'm gonna do is um, kind of go to the back, you know, the red back side. And then I kind of already started just pulling on this. I kind of have long fingernails, so I was able to just carefully pull this off. I don't have a prying tool, but that's basically the next step to start <clears throat> pulling off this back panel. And then I'm gonna go and then do the front panel. Now I'm gonna go and do the same thing for this side. And then there's this crucial point before you lift off the top of the bottom that you have to know about. So let me just carefully pry the front panel off. Okay, so I take that back, I kinda, I have the back panel off. And now this is the back, but this is the top. Now, when I just started lifting very carefully, the front panel just kinda fell off. So the tricky part here, which you'll also see in every other video, is that it, you can't just rip off this top, you have to carefully lift it. Because there's a chip there, I don't know if you can see, uh, the one with the yellow sticker. That is basically, I think, the white wire and the Bluetooth. But it's wired to the top of the, um, of the front, of the top cover. So um, one thing you can do is you can take that chip out and then that allows you to um, totally remove the, the top cover. You'll see that really cool Atari logo on the motherboard. <clears throat> and you'll see actually right here is the M2 slot right there. Um, so if you just want to upgrade the, um, the hard drive, I mean add more hard drive space with the secondary SSD, then that's how you do it, just right there. And then you're pretty much done. Okay, like I said, that chip there with the um, yellow sticker, I think that's the Bluetooth and that's kind of the, the radio, you know, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So there was one more Torx 10 screw there, um, right there, which I removed. And then I'm gonna caref I carefully took it out of the slot. Okay, that's definitely the wireless chip. It's already Link. Um, 
and it's got the MAC address on it. Um, so that's been carefully pulled out of the slot. Um, so now this back, this top cover, you know, can be completely separated. So now we'll go back and work on the main unit again. I'm going to take off this heat shield or this metal shield. Um, so there's a screw here, a screw here, and I think a screw here. Okay, so I have that metal shield off. Next step, um, you have some ribbon cables right here that are holding onto the motherboard, and those are for the USB. So there's one there, and there's one there. And to disconnect those ribbon cables for the USB, if, you, if you're not used to these kind of ribbon cables, this little, there's like a little door, it'll actually flip up and then just pull the, the cable out. So I don't know if you can see that black door, just with your fingernail, you can get that and flip it up. I have to remove the screws for the rest of the motherboard. Um, so there's like about three more screws, and they're the ones that are, they're gonna be Torx 10 again, I think. There's one there. I think I removed one already when I was trying to take off the metal shield. And there might be one more right there. Lift it, um, and flip it over, and that's when we should actually see the memory finally. Yep. So it looks like we have eight gigs of Kingston right there. And it looks like that's the battery. You know, I'm gonna throw in the SSD, and this is really easy, it just goes in that slot right there. So there's kind of a classic mistake here where I um, don't have an extra screw for the M.2 SSD. So what I'm gonna do is route Peter to PayPal, and there was another piece here, which it was a screw holding in this kind of strange rubbery piece. And what that is, is there's an LED there. That rubbery piece kind of helps redirect light to the um, to the logo on the case to light to illuminate the logo. Um, I'm actually running out of light here myself. But um, so I'm gonna go ahead and steal that screw because that's kind of a not a completely necessary part, but that's what's great about projects like this. And I can always take it apart and add it, fix it again later. Okay, so I rebooted. Okay, so I rebooted holding escape again, came back into the BIOS. And now we're gonna go down to setup utility. I could have shown this earlier, but it's gonna show you. So the CPU right there you see is AMD Ryzen embedded um, 1606G with Radeon. So that's like, I think the Vega um, on chip graphics. Yeah, Vega graphics. Um, and then you can see that the, the new memory is recognized. So. 16 gigs both in channel A and channel B. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to install off, off a USB drive. So regardless of what which distro I decide on, I'm going to get um, something called Bolina Etcher. Um, and I'm going to get that piece of software from etcher.io. And what that does is this software will basically um, write the ISO file for a Linux distro to a USB drive. Okay, so I think a reasonable choice is Ubuntu just because um, I know it supports AMD hardware. I have another kind of Ryzen 5 mini PC um, where it runs pretty well. Okay, so I've rebooted and basically I just held down the escape key on the keyboard. So like I said, I have a USB keyboard attached um, to the, one of the back USB ports. So if you just hold down escape while it's booting up, then you'll get to the BIOS menu. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go to administer secure boot. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable enforce secure boot. So enforce secure boot, and I'm going to hit um, disable. Okay, now that we're pretty sure that all the hardware upgrades are okay, we saw in the BIOS that there's two sticks of 16 gig RAM. We saw in the system menu that it can see that there's a new SSD stick. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, the part of the menu called apps, and we're gonna come down and go to PC mode. What that'll do is that'll let us... Um, so the Atari VCS allows you to boot to a new operating system when restarting to boot to a new OS. Plug in USB thumb drive containing a bootable version of preferred OS, then press A to restart. Okay, so I had a little bit of a glitch where it wasn't booting up into Ubuntu off the USB until I tried the USB port in the back of the computer. Um, so now we're up into the Ubuntu um, installer. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of go through these steps. Okay, it got past the Wi-Fi. Um, I'm going to do a normal installation. I'm going to say install third-party software for graphics Wi-Fi hardware and additional media because I'm not a hardcore open source guy. I do love Linux, but um, I also want all my hardware to work. Okay, so I've kind of hit a snag because now it's asking me, um, it's like trying to install on the MMC, which is the built-in 32 gig memory, and that's basically not what I want. I want it to find the one terabyte um, SSD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back 
into the Atari OS, um, go through their menus and format that one gig drive, I mean one terabyte drive, and then see if that somehow kind of enables it as well. Okay, so this is pretty interesting because now that I've formatted the drive from Atari, from the Atari side, now Ubuntu is seeing it, so that's kind of interesting. So what the heck, let's give the Atari still almost 300 gigs of extra space in case I end up using this more as an Atari console. And we'll give Ubuntu 725 gigs, which is pretty much plenty for when I use it as like a development machine. Okay, installation is finished. So now comes the moment of truth. Like what kind of boot manager is going to come up, if any? Or am I going to have to use the PC mode of the Atari? Okay, so using PC mode from Atari does not boot you up off the other SSD, only the USB drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the BIOS. Um, I'm going to look at boot and see if there's a different um, boot order. Okay, I'm going to try boot order options B SSD before EMMC. If we see the Ubuntu logo come up, then we know that um, it's actually booting off the SSD now. Yes, and we we do see the Ubuntu logo and yep I see login so I think that's it I think we are fully into booting up to Linux now um, straight from powering up Okay, so I'm just kind of, I have some scripts just to do some mass installs um, where I have a, all my favorite packages and I have a script that just goes through and does an apt install, so that this is kind of what it is, and I keep the, kind of my files of all of my favorite packages under git so I can constantly be adding or deleting, and then I run the script on that kind of list of favorite packages. Okay, now, so everything's working, everything's up. Um, I've installed all my favorite Linux packages. Uh, we have NeoFetch here in the corner. CPU, AMD, Ryzen, Embedded, R1606G with Radeon Vega. GPU, AMD, ATI, Radeon Vega series. This is some Emacs and some C++ code. Um, just to be a little bit more hardcore, I like installing the um, Atari ST font. Just Google Atari ST font, it comes up, and then you just download the true type fonts, and then just Google like how to install fonts on Linux. So this is just a little bit of um, Python and Pygame development, just testing out um, collision detection. So as I'm controlling this blue ball with the mouse, Okay, so on the Linux side, we're gonna um, to get some games. We're gonna install Steam, so it's basically just sudo apt install Steam. And it's gonna install a bunch of dependencies, so we'll let it do it. Okay, so I've installed Steam. Steam has done its own updates, and now I'm to my kind of library. Um, so these are, I filtered here by clicking on the penguin, um, that's going to filter out and only show the games that run on Linux. And then these are, this is my library, so these are already Linux games that i purchased for other systems. So um, there's actually quite a bit, you know, it's not like just a few games here and there. It's definitely just a small portion of my full like Steam library, but it's still 
it's still very decent, yeah. So I'm gonna install something, just a couple, just a demo, see how they run. Okay, this is Neon Chrome. And um, this is kind of a cool cyberpunk game, available on Steam. So I just have it set up, mouse, keyboard, I'm not using the Atari um, controller yet. But everything looks really good. Um, this is an ultra widescreen monitor. So this is Dex, it's kind of another cyberpunk um, platformer, it's a little bit of RPG. So this game actually, so this game, like I said, it's a platformer, it actually looks really good um, on an on a ultra widescreen monitor. This is um, Space Ace, which is similar to, um, made by the same people that did Dragon's Lair. YouTube is running well, full screen. Audio is going through uh, Bluetooth to a Bluetooth speaker across the room. So that about wraps it up. I hope you guys found this project at least a little bit interesting. Um, I didn't do a great job of technically going step by step. You know, I was holding the camera, looking at the screen, so I don't want to do too much of that. Um, and also, like I said, there's better teardown videos and upgrade videos already on this machine. But I wanted to kind of show proof of concept what's possible when you get everything working with the upgrades and that it's actually a pretty cool Linux workstation. So when we talk about what games are available on Steam for Linux, um, for some reason a lot of the, the games that are available are like the cyberpunk games, which I think it also goes really well with kind of this console. So that was kind of a cool thing, like all the Shadowrun games. Um, there's some other ones, Satellite Rain, which is almost like a Shadowrun game. Also, just kind of some hacker simulation games are available. So this kind of turns out to be a really cool like Atari Linux, like kind of coding hacking machine. And that's kind of what I was going for. So anyway, guys, that's it for this time. And um, I'll try to get more stuff up. You know, I still have a ton of robotics kits and um, other kind of interesting hard software hardware combination type of things is what I like, as well as um, some more new th cool things from Sideshow, some hot toys and things like that I haven't unboxed yet.